Hi, welcome back to the Atlas Search Scene. This is Episode 6, Advanced Search Topics. Let's jump right in. First, we're going to talk about embedded documents. Embedded documents are a mechanism to uh, index the nested document structure that you may have on your original MongoDB Atlas data. These nested documents, uh, when they get indexed with Atlas Search, there's two different ways that can be handled. You can flatten the field so that they get pulled up to the uh, main parent document and are mapped directly on that. So it's kind of a flattening operation. Or you can use uh, what's called the embedded document uh, setting so that you can say that a particular field is of a embedded document type. And here is the documentation. Again, we'll link all these documentations down below. And so you set up this embedded document in your uh, index structure so that uh, when you index the documents, uh, they become sub-documents. So let's take a look at the, the whiteboard here real quick. So um, this is what your a document may look like in your, uh, in your collection where you've got a, a, a main document and then you've got some sub-document structures here. So this one has uh, a sub-document and then the sub-document itself has another sub-document and then the main document has a, a two sub-documents here. What happens when you index these embedded documents into Atlas Search is they effectively become separate documents in the Atlas Search index. And they get put in, it does, it's kind of irrelevant for, um, for our searching concerns, but they get put in in kind of the nested um, first to the outer. So our main document one is kind of the last document that is indexed out of this one and the sub-documents get indexed first. Now, when these documents are returned from the dollar search operator, the only document that gets returned, the only documents that get returned are the top level main documents. And so in this particular case, one document in the collection with nested documents, the only document you'll ever get back from dollar search is the outer one. Now, when you use the uh, query operator here, we see the embedded document query operator here. Uh, what this does is it matches these sub document structures here and uh, you can perform uh, Boolean type operations so that you can only match uh, a particular sub document. And if that particular sub document matches, that then will return back the top level parent document here. Let's now talk about fuzzy search. So. Uh, users may make typos. We expect that to happen. And we want to make our search a slightly, we want to make our search lenient so that it can accommodate users' typos and mistakes and so on. So uh, there is a uh, fuzzy operator that can be applied to the text operator that uh, you'll see right here um, on the text operator. There is a, a fuzzy option. This fuzzy option. Um, really only has two values. You can make it one or two. Um, and that's really just to dictate how fuzzy that matching occurs. And then you get um, uh, a prefix length here so that you can control whether the beginning of the string that the user uh, entered is a match or not. So you can kind of narrow down the space of searching for these fuzzy strings. Now, the fuzzy operator itself uses a distance algorithm um, based on the Levenstein distance algorithm, which accounts for uh, transpositions, it accounts for edits and deletes um, of characters within that. Um, one thing to note is that the fuzzy operator is only so fuzzy. So um, you're only going to catch, um, you know, kind of small typos. It's definitely a useful part of your relevancy equation, but if you are truly trying to achieve uh, the most lenient way to match uh, decently, uh, fuzzy is going to be only one part of that puzzle, and you're going to embed other operators like we talked about in the search episode, uh, where you're going to use compound and match fuzzy to 
to not so fuzzy to exact to uh, maybe lowercase and so on. So consider fuzzy just one piece of the relevancy puzzle for matching for uh, your content. Um, and along the lines of uh, fuzzy operators, we have another one called autocomplete. Autocomplete is an operator that uh, what it does it engrams the terms that come out of your analysis process. And uh, that those engrams are all of the windows of text uh, for each of the terms. Um, we saw this in the uh, search and the indexing uh, episodes where we could see how the engrams get expanded uh, during the analysis process. Um, again, it, it's a useful technique to match things loosely, um, but again, it's only one piece to the puzzle. And when you're matching um, fragments of text this way, um, it, the relevancy can really kind of um, get uh, unpredictable a little bit. So uh, be sure that when you're using autocomplete that you're mixing and matching the autocomplete operator with other operators that will do more exact matching so that you can boost uh, relevancy from there. Uh, next up on our advanced topics here is, is geospatial. So just like text, we index uh, geospatial coordinates into an index structure uh, that is optimized for locating uh, geospatial points, either um, by uh, exact point or distance within point or within shapes um, or um, disjointed shapes so that you can use shape matching um, and, and um, other geo type operators here, circle, bounding box, polygon. Um, so you have uh, these operators here, you have geo within and then you have geo shape. These operators again allow you to uh, index points and shapes and do matching for those. Highlighting. Highlighting is the ability to retrieve the keywords within the context of the original document, the keywords that were used in the query. So a user searches for a keyword or two and we want uh, the result to show, say, the plot field of our movie with the words that they typed in highlighted so that they can see where the matches were made. And the way this works uh, with Atlas search is you specify highlighting at uh, within your search operation. So let's take for example uh, this query right here where we're going to search for the word adventure within the plot field. We add this extra piece here to our dollar search operator to say that we want to highlight on the plot field and when we do that uh, the Atlas search process will use the query itself and then take the terms out of the query and find where they exist within the specified fields that we've put within our highlighting specification here and return back the plot field with it broken up so that we can see which piece we want to add some bold around or highlight in some way to the user. And so the way we retrieve those highlights is we use the project stage and we can get the search highlights back um, as metadata. And we add that to our documents because they're per document metadata. And in this case, we projected the title and the, the full plot as well as the highlighted plot. And in this case, you can see uh, this says a serial adventure writer uh, as the plot. And then we look at our highlighting data and we can see that we get a uh, plot structure here. And within that plot structure, we get an array of substrings. And it shows that a serial space was the prefix to the highlighted text. And then we get the word adventure and it's a type hit. So we're gonna put bold around this when we render this to our users. And you can see over here um, in another document, we see the title, the plot here is the adventures of, and Notice that adventures is the 
text in the plot field, but we actually search for the word adventure. So uh, because we specified English as our plot field type, we get uh, matching that uh, sees through pluralization in this case. So we get the as the prefix to the highlighting, and then we get the word adventures as our hit that we're going to put the bold around. And that's highlighting. The next up on our advanced topics here is the more like this operator. The more like this is a uh, clever operator that what it does is it takes a, uh, a like option here. This like option takes an array of document like structures. Um, it could actually be a document that you just retrieved from Atlas and you're going to pass that back in and say, give me documents like this one. And it will take the fields using your index definition and effectively tokenize, analyze these provided documents at query time, pull out what's called the interesting terms. So terms that um, have um, maybe a low term frequency, uh, just terms that um, are uh, perhaps slightly rare in there. And it will use the terms that it extracts from the provided documents and perform a Boolean or basically just a, uh, a, a compound sh with a bunch of should clauses uh, against the Atlas search index and find documents that have those terms. And because we're doing basically a Boolean should or a, a, a large or query, the best documents that match more of those clauses comes to the top. So you will get documents that are most like the documents that you provided in relevancy matched order. And that's more like this.